facility can process and sort more than 20,000 tons of recyclable newspaper, cardboard, aluminum, glass, and plastic each month, equal to the weight of 261 Boeing 737s. Customers who purchase recycled materials want them to be free of contaminants. They don't want plastic or metal mixed in with their paper or paper mixed in with the plastic they've ordered. The expectation is that we should be close to 100% uh, purity in the materials that we're sending to our customers. Uh, we expect our machine to give us 95% of the quality. The extra 5% we do manually. We have all this technology, but at the end, our employees make the difference. So let's examine the single stream separation process and how people and technology together produce a quality end product. A truck containing mixed recyclable materials arrives at the processing facility. After being weighed and recorded, the contents are emptied onto the tipping floor. The recyclables are loaded onto the main feed conveyor, which directs the material to several different sorting areas. In the first area, large rigid plastics, such as toys and buckets, are separated for bailing and sale to plastic markets. Non-recyclable materials are discarded into the trash. The materials continue on to a series of disc screens. This specially designed separating equipment consists of rotating discs that push cardboard over the top. Larger pieces of cardboard are sent to a second conveyor for another pass to remove contaminants and then to the baling process. Material that falls between the disc screens moves to the next sort area called the combination news screen where paper materials are separated from household bottles and cans. The first section removes most of the newspaper, advertising inserts and office paper which is filtered onto a processing line where any materials other than paper are manually removed. This product automatically falls into the final bunkers, which, when filled, is fed into the baler and prepared for customer pickup. The pre-sort and newspaper conveyor stations contain a series of air vacuums. These allow plastic bags to be removed from the line and sent to a separate bunker. The plastic bags, known as film plastic, are also baled and marketed for sale. After the disc screens have sorted out paper and cardboard, what's left, steel, glass, plastic, and aluminum, is directed to a glass breaker to remove glass, and then to a paper magnet to remove any remaining paper and film plastic from the container stream. The glass is transferred by conveyor to an inside storage bunker. The containers exiting the glass breaker then pass under a magnet that removes all steel cans for baling. The remaining materials, primarily plastic containers and aluminum cans, are then passed under an optical scanner to remove light plastic containers, such as soft drink bottles. The remaining containers pass a manual sort station where additional heavier plastics are captured. These include clear plastic containers, such as milk and juice bottles, and colored containers, such as liquid detergent containers. These products are also separated for baling. What's left? Cardboard juice cartons or non-conforming plastics pass under another optical scanner for removal. The remaining material goes through a magnetic field known as an eddy current to remove the aluminum, which is blown into a material storage bunker for baling. Any remaining material not repelled by the eddy current goes to the waste line for transfer to a landfill or a waste-to-energy facility. At Waste Management, we're constantly on a mission to extract more value from the materials we make.